drums plays and the action packed drama of gun smoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory out west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a state marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke is a story of the violence that moved west with young America. It's also my story. Me, Matt Morgan, U.S. Marshal. I'm the first man to look for and the last they want to meet. Right now, I'd say Dodge City's full of hombres hoping they won't have to look for nor meet the law. Not for a few days, anyway. After that, the law will be gone. Back along the trails leading to the various spreads. So, uh, I'm talking about the cattle and cow punches and breeders and dodge after the big roundups, the beef sales, with money enough to array the whole town. Yes, sir. High-spirited bunch. Not much harm in them, so as I do my night round the saloons and the joints, they're not looking very hard. Not until I'm approaching the plaza saloon. Well, I'm a lot of yards away when I hear some piano player inside the place playing one of those... Mournful ditties. I'm figuring that, well, perhaps I can skip the plaza when something changes, not only my mind, but also the piano players. <laughs> now, usually when you hear a piano switch tunes, it doesn't mean trouble, but when the switch is brought about by shots, it's a signal that some fellow's getting them out too trigger happy. Not satisfied with helping to array the town, but getting ready to lead others into tree in the town. So you make for the trouble spot at the run, as I do. Faster! I said faster with that piano. Come on, come on. You want me to make you with ease? <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, just take it easy. Hey, what's the matter with you, huh? Get that piano of yours going up. Hold it, fella. Huh? Hold it. Let's see your holster, your shooting irons, nice and neat, huh? You're talking to me, mister? To you. I don't like your talk. Well, now that's too bad, I guess. How about hosting your... Wait. Now, wait a minute. You telling me what to do? Yeah. That... That a badge on your whiskey? Don't you know Marshal Morgan? Marshal Morgan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the great Marshal Morgan. Yeah, the gun-smoking lawman of this... One horse creek crossing they call Dodge City. All right, Marshal. All right, Mr. Marshal Morgan. Let's see you try telling a red-blooded Texan cowpuncher to holster his guns. Let's see you try it again, huh? Texan, holster your guns. Fine. Fine, that's just fine. The mighty fine and brave, you Marshal Morgan lawman. Now, let's see. Hey, watch this, fellas. Watch this. Now let's see you make me. Well, what do you say we don't have any trouble? Huh? Yeah, but I like trouble. I sure do. I I like this kind of trouble. Cowboy, why don't you hit the hay? Mr. Marshal Lawman Morgan, you're just spinning the words that don't mean a thing. Because you know why? Because you're scared. You are, and rightly so. Of what? Of a red-blooded Texan. Of me. All right, Texan. You hear that, fellas? The great tough Matt Morgan scared. Oh, boy, I wouldn't. You wouldn't what? I wouldn't boast. Not with two guns in your hands. Two guns I'm taking. Like this. <laughs> oh. All right. Show's over. Start playing again, fella. Yeah. Get O'Brien, you, uh, Max Straper. Oh. Pick up the text and carry him to the calaboose. I will do that if I'm you, Marshal. As you're not, I can't sit. Easy with him, boys. Pick him up properly. Sure, Just keep on whatever you were doing, mister. Leave this be. Hey, Kenny Cross, hold those bad wings up for the Why boys. Why not leave the text and be, Marshal? You a home to go to? Maybe. You appear to be sober. Appearances often wrong. Like the law taking the text to the local calaboose. So I'm wrong, am I? So wrong, you're making the law look a fool. 
stranger to death? Maybe. I said strange. I said maybe. Look, I don't know you. I don't want to know you. Now, what say you be on your way, huh? Oh, you make me tired. <laughs> Clem, Clem Mailing, Pete, pick up this critter too, huh? Okay, Mark. Follow Jed and Max to lock up. Yeah. Yeah, it seems that before the night will be gone, I'll have quite a few in the cells. All right, fella, you go in the next cell. Have they gone, Marshal? You mean the fellas who brought you both here to the jailhouse? Yeah. Yeah, they've gone. The Texan, the cowboy. See for yourself, still out to it. Well, why? Uh, Gorson's my name, McCann Gorson. So? Uh, is there uh, some place, you, your office maybe, where we can talk? About what? $20,000. Start walking straight ahead. It brings us to my office. Yeah. You won't be overheard. And that's my story, Marshal. I stand to collect $20,000. See this thing through and you won't be sorry. And you can prove this story, Gus? I can. Same as you could by riding out Salt Fork Mine. Mm. It's just on 160 miles, right slap in the middle of Comanche country. Yeah, I knew there were prospects of gold out that way, but I never realized that... Look, Gus, and tell it to me again, only slowly this time, huh? Well, uh, as I explained, I- I'm what's called a commission agent. I yeah. buy, sell anything for a commission. Beef, wheat, hides, fodder, real estate, leases, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, and once in a while, along comes a deal involving a mighty big commission, big enough to kill for, like this one. You agree? Well, I've known men to kill for less than $20,000. Oh, I can't say I, well, I blame this Galico for trying, but I wish he hadn't picked on trying it with me. Yeah, Galico, huh? You've never met him? I never met him, never seen him, never met anyone who'd done either. Mm. So I, I just can't get a description of him. All you know is that he's threatened to kill you. Plum dead. But so far he's made only one attempt. Well, which was close enough. Bullet fanned the back of my neck. Now, why didn't you come to me in the first place instead of that? Pulling that stunt in the plaza. Well, I, I figured it looked more natural, that's all. And, boy, I, I sort of figured this, too. If Galico was watching me all the time, as I've been told he is, and he saw me approach the Lord, he'd, boy, he'd know he'd started to uh, get me word yeller. But mm. uh, this way, I'm picking, a, well, picking a fight with the law, getting myself buffaloed cold, lugged to the local calaboose. And, well, if that ain't natural, then I don't know what is. Well, look, I could have given you protection in another way. Marshal... I've been told that no one breaks out of your Dodge City jail. To me, if no one can break out, it follows no one can break in. So? So, here I am, begging you to keep me locked up for a week. All I ask is that you refuse me any visitors on account I don't know anybody in Dodge. Except, of course, Miss Bundy. Miss Bundy Brixen. You know Miss Bundy? Well, I know most dancers here in Dodge. Part of my work, so... uh... You want me to keep you locked up for one week till the buyer arrives? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rick Joseph is by. And, uh, he'll be coming in by stage day week. And you don't know him by sight either. Oh, there's no need for that. You see, uh, see uh, this? A yeah, $10 bill ripped in half. Sure. Rick Joseph has the other. So all I've got to do is wait for someone to come up to me in a week's time, hand me half a $10 bill, which matches this half, and then hand over the papers and the lease and everything to him. Uh-huh. He, in turn... Well, he hands me the commission, $20,000. Which I hope you'll pay into the bank pronto. Otherwise, it'll be a big temptation for this Al Galico to still carry out his threat, huh? Oh. Unless you, uh, you kill him for me first. Just like that. Oh, no. Not quite. There's, uh, there's a bonus to this, uh, thousand dollars. Oh, you're a strange man, Gus, and mighty strange. How come? You expect me to protect you from this unknown, unseen, would-be killer? Well, Albert. correction, Marshal, not a would-be killer. He's in earnest, no pretense. From what I can gather, he's killed before. You expect him to kill you for $20,000, yet you expect me to kill him for $1,000, huh? Five is the absolute top figure I'll go. Yes, and I ought to bounce your head against that stone wall. What? And toss you in a cell, book you with everything, including attempted bribe. <laughs> Marshal, a bribe. Did I use that word, Marshal? Bonus. Oh, oh, well, that's better. Yeah, bonus is a bonus. But not for you, Marshal. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. Oh, and what impression is the right one? Well, I imagine that even in such a thriving city as Dodge, there's a, a deserving charity. Yeah, there is. Well, and... Uh, 
Kill Al Galico, and then you name the charity. I paid $1,000. All this uh, elaborate business. Why well, go to all the trouble, Carson? You look a reasonably intelligent man. You don't appear to be frightened. Marshal, I... I am frightened. I've never been so all fired scared in my whole life. Over something that might not happen, someone who might not exist. Marshal, I know. I feel it in my bones. Deepest hunch I've ever had. I just know that Al Galico is out to kill me. Not just because I'm me, but to get that piece of the $10 bill I've got. Mm -hmm. Your proposition is I keep you alive, you pay $5,000 into a charity I name. Well, that's right. Except for a slight error. $1,000. Plus your keep. Oh, sure, sure. I, I couldn't expect the Dodge City taxpayers to keep me now, could I? Yeah. Well, you can bunk in the cell next to the Texan. Oh. Well, thanks, Marshal. Of course, you uh, you won't mind visits by uh, by uh, Miss Bundy. Look, this place is the local calaboose, not a boarding house. But Miss Bundy, she, she's a close friend of mine. The fact is, I'm thinking, well, when this is all over, I'm thinking of making her my secretary. And take her back east, I hope. <laughs> Why, sure. I, I figure... Marshal, blow out them lamps. Hurry, blow them out. There's someone at the window with a gun. Kill them lamps. Relax, will you? Relax. You tell me to relax when I saw a face looking in here. Sure. You promised me protection. From all but Miss Bundy Brixton, didn't you? Yeah, say? from all but... S say, well, was that who... Yeah, she'd be pleased to know her face had... Uh... Marshal. <laughs> Marshal, I... <laughs> well, I... Come on in. Hi, Marshal. Hello, Bundy. They told me you were here, honey darling. You, uh... You know the Marshal, don't you? Well, who don't in this crummy... <laughs> In this town. I take it you uh, you don't like Dodge. You take it right, Marshal Man. And as soon as my honey doll here makes a lot of sugar... It's back east for us, isn't it, honey? Sure. But say, what's going on here? Why you and the hoose gal, for Pete's sake? I did hear you took a swipe at the law. Marshal, when you release my honey doll on bail, maybe... If you mean Garson, sure, I'll release uh, you. Look, uh, don't let's be too hasty about this, huh? Oh, I get it. You and that Galico on Sure. Uh, and do you mind treating it serious? If Galico gets me, then he gets 20000 And you get yourself stuck here in Dodge without me, huh? Marshal, do you savvy this business? Me, I don't. Garson claims he don't know what this Galico looks like. And the only way he can identify the other critter, the one paying over the money, Rick Joseph, the only way he can be identified is by matching a torn currency bill. It just flamboozles me. Well, ma'am, I've known of other business deals to be handled in similar ways. Loco. That's what it is. Well, listen, honey, why, why worry you pretty hit about it, huh? It just help me keep alive until the deal's over, that's all. How? By not letting on, I'm staying in the Hooska my own free will. Let everyone, all the folk, believe I'm being held on the charge of, uh, well, uh, disturbing the peace. That all right by you, Marshal? Sure thing, disturbing the peace it is. Now, I figure it's time we lucked up for the night, huh? You're not going to leave my honey doll unguarded all night, are you? Oh, no, I'll bunk here, too. Oh, sure. Over there, I suppose. What's wrong with that? It's comfortable, Billy. No doubt, but... Ain't it a long way from the sales? Or are you letting Garson bunk here, too? Oh, oh no. Uh, me for the sales, sweetie. Ain't, ain't no one broke out of them, which means no one can break into them. Get at me, Savvy. All right. You know what you're doing. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, well in the right. afternoon, say, around two. Oh, well, no, Garson, I'm doing you a favor, can't you understand? I'll be around at two. So don't get in an uproar, honey. You just go right up to your little cell and get yourself a lot of sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, sweetie. Night, Marshal. Uh, you can get back to your room and house? Oh, but of course, unless you like to escort me. Good night. Night. Pleasant dreams. Ah, it's time to be locked up, Garson. What? 
Oh, oh yeah, L locked up, sure, sure. Right this way. I'll carry the lamp. That's right pretty, too, Marshal. Yeah. Oh, here we are. If you figure you need extra blankets, just reach out and help yourself. Well, thanks, Marshal. I reckon you made me right comfortable. I guess I've stayed in worse hotels in my time. <laughs> Inside. I'm sure. I suppose you have to lock me in, huh? Well, if you want to be right out of harm's way, sure do. Well, good night. The rest of the night passes uneventful. Comes morning, I release the now sore-headed, sullen Texan to tell him to fork leather out of Dodge, stay out. He looks hard at me, thinks twice. The moose is without further trouble. I tend to one two things, fix it for meals to be brought into my star border. Wow, it's not too bad, Marshal, not too bad at all. In fact, better food than I've had in this city so far. As a slice of pie under the cover, some too. Oh, my appetite is... What's the stirring for? I'll take it. Here, read it yourself. What? Being in jail don't save you none. Hey, A.G. Say, where'd you get this food? Who, who, who put that note in the pie? Uh, A.G., that's Al Galico. Oh, don't stand there shining your star, Marshal. Go out and use it. Find that hombre. Find him before he kills me. Go, go on. Go I on. Check back on where I get the food. It's the same place I always get it. They assure me they're just as much bamboozled, hugged tight, and thrown as I am. Well, find nothing, learn nothing, so the day lingers, dies. Night passes uneventful. Next day is kind of cold, windy, sun breaking through for only ten minutes at a time. Garson asks if he can use the exercise yard to get warm. I tell him, sure thing. Both go out to catch some of the sun. Ah, wow, it's sure nice to feel down your back, huh? Yeah, in winter, sure. Yeah, the sun's kind of friendly in winter. Opposite in summer. Yeah, it can be killer out in the Badlands and the Mesa. Yeah. Hit it to my ground! Hit against the wall! I knew, I knew they got me! I knew they got See me! Where came from? <laughs> get me aside! Get me away from here! Easy now. Move along the wall. Keep down low. Uh, go on, go on. It won't be hurt if you keep down low enough. It's that Galico, I tell you. It's him right enough. Okay, inside, quick! and lock that door after it. Sure thing, sure. I wish I hadn't ever put a stake in this deal now. You, you've got to do something about this, Marshal. I, I want action. I, I want this crazy little caught and hanged. For what? For, for, for attempted murder. Hey, ain't that enough to hang a man in these parts? I tell him it could be. Could be. Lock him in a cell, leave him with a gun, then take a walk around the Plaza Saloon. Yes, it's by now late afternoon I find this... Bundy Brixton in a dressing room, getting ready for work. I'm due out there in about 15, 20 minutes to sit down. Say, <laughs> hey, first time I entertained the law, so how'd I go about it, hmm? By uh, answering questions. By answering what kind of questions? The kind about uh, Ken Garson. Such yes. Such as how much you know about this business. You, um, you mean this salt pork man deal? And the person calling himself Al Galico, also the hombre known as Rick Joseph. Ain't Garson told you? Oh, he's told me. So now you tell me what you know, huh? Me? I don't know nothing from nothing, Marshal. Garson has tied them out sometimes. How long have you known him? Why? Oh, there's no particular reason. He hasn't been in Dodge long. That's how long I've known him. Yet you're going back east with them after this deal. Hmm? Marshal, what gal wouldn't jump at the chance, hmm? To go back east or to get her hands on $20,000? Marshal, how long can you lock a gal up in the calaboose for slap on the law? We've all got to eat, I guess. Yeah, we all got to eat. Now, if you don't mind... Sure. Need I ask you to see me if you remember anything that'll give me a lead? No need. Thanks. Don't mention it. Marshal. Yeah? No, I guess you wouldn't. Shut the door. So long. Marshal, 
I, I've been figuring. Now you recollect something solid. I recollect this. If Galico kills me at a distance like he's been trying, how's he figure he can handle the deal with Rick Joseph? I got one half the ten dollar bill. Rick Joseph got the other. So mm-hmm. all right. So this Galico kills me in jail, say. Yeah. Well, he's got to reach my body to get to the bill. You get my drift? Oh yeah, it's what I call the softening process. The softening process? You mean soften me up for something? Yeah, soften you up, scare you into being only too glad to hand over the two and a half the dollar bill before this Rick Joseph is due in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's the trail he's taking, Marshal. I guess it is right enough. You see, this Rick Joseph, the organizations he represents, why, th- th- they don't care who got the other half of the dollar bill. They don't care at all, so long as it's handed over with the salt fork papers. And in return, th- this Joseph just hands over the 20000 Why go to all that trouble about the $10 bill? Well, why wouldn't the handling over of the papers be enough in which to pay the commission? On account of the papers in a deal like this are easily forged. Oh, I see. The only way Joseph's got to tell he's getting the real genuine stuff is by this torn bill, you follow? Yeah. And the actual papers are still on you? Yeah. And they stay there until Joseph shows up on the stage. Mm, Then I figure... You figure what, Marshal? Don't talk and say anything to someone trying to reach the window. What? Well, well, now, I, I, well, now, I, 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 Look out! I, 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 did you, did, did you get it? I'm going for... Now, uh, listen. Yeah, tell Garson, I guess, that Bronx carrying the gunny. Even in his state, Garson realizes that by the time I could get outside, the ride would be well out of sight. Yeah, this whole business is getting me now like heel flies. Making me feel this something all fired loco about it. Well, loco or not, I gotta play it out till it's over. And over it finally is with the arrival of the stage late after sunset. As the passengers climb down, I ask, which is the number named Joseph? Rick Joseph? The dark, well dressed fellow says he's Joseph, and who wants to know? Well, I tell him. Fellas meet the jailhouse, the other half of the ten dollar bill is produced, papers change hands, and so does a leather pouch bulging with money. Well, Garson doesn't trouble to count the twenty thousand. <laughs> Not all of it. Only one thousand of it. While his counting this donation to charity, the stage leaves again, taking Rick Joseph. Finally the excitement dies. And as Garson finishes strapping the pouch, he says, Well, there's a thousand, Marshal. And with it goes my thanks for what you've done. Well, I'd rather you hand the money over yourself, cousin. I'll do it. What? Bundy, what are you... Hey, you're, you're, you're toting guns. I know how to use them. So reach, Buster, and you, Marshal. Uh-huh. You, you, you Howdy, Al Galico. Shove over the pouch, Gus, and come on, shove it my way. But, 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 but I, I don't get it, Bundy. What, 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 shove it over, Buster. Then turn around, both of you. Turn around, face the wall, and keep reaching. But, 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 Shut uh, your Bundy, fluttering I, I, and do as I say. You too, lawman. Well, sure thing, lady. You mean you want me to turn around like this? <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing left for me to see, Marshal. I... I won't stick around for Miss Bundy's trial, if, if you don't mind. Oh, sure thing. I know how you feel. Yeah, she... She sure had me fooled, huh? Mm. Well, I wish I knew how to thank you, Marshal. Well, $1,000 will put a new roof in this jailhouse. But uh, 5000 will build a new wing. For women prisoners? That well? Uh-huh. Well, I'll go get that money pouch right now, so... Uh, Stick around for a moment. Stick around. Join us again next week as Matt Morgan fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is written by Ronald Ingleby and produced by Jim Bradley for our transcript.